Hey YouTube, this is Rishika and this would be my 14th video tutorial on data stage. In my previous videos, I have dealt with database stages and few of the file stages. And in my previous video, I have discussed about the aggregator stage in parallel job. So yeah, now uh, I'm gonna discuss in this to uh, in this video tutorial i'm going to discuss the copy stage it's pretty simple stage so it doesn't uh, really make uh, i mean <laughs> i don't want to really make a long video so yeah it's a simple stage so basically let's design a job uh, before designing let me let me just uh, tell you a little about the copy stage so yeah because it's in the processing uh, processing category it's a processing stage obviously and it can have single input link and any number of output links it can have single input link and multiple number of output links. So basically, what does this copy stage do? If you see this graphical interface, see, you have one copy at the back and you have like multiple copies at the front, right? And the name is copy. So what does that say? So just the copy stage is used to make copies of single input data set. And we are just making multiple copies of that input data set and writing it to number of output data sets, different number of output data sets. So yeah, that's that's pretty much it about the copy stage. I need not really uh, know anything more than that. And uh, yeah, uh, I mean, uh, the, the most important questions, I mean, one of the important questions about the copy stage is, it's not that just you just copy it, you can use this copy stage uh, for dropping the columns in the mapping. I mean, you can do it in any stage, but yeah, you can do it in copy stage too. And you can rename the columns too. And you can just have your own rename before passing it on to the next stage. And you can have, uh, what do I say? You can have like um, uh, changing the column data types. Uh, column, ch uh, column changing data types, it's more like a, a implicit data conversions like cat to var care and all that it's it, it a data conversions doesn't mean that uh, you have like a string to uh, integer or something just implicit data conversions can be done but still we get warnings in the director so we need to have like modify stage to convert the data uh, data data conversions so yeah that's pretty much about this uh, most people ask this what what is the uh, functionality of copy stage so yeah copy stage just doesn't copy uh, to multiple outputs it we can rename and we can drop the columns and yeah i mean this these are pretty much good but sometimes we do have like implicit data conversions but it's it's uh, let's not include that as one of the functionalities because some data conversions the word implicit is so particular because some of the data conversions even though they are implicit we need to we need to handle them before we process otherwise the directors throw some errors so yeah and that's pretty much about the copy stage so let's let's uh, just design a basic job and then uh, see sorry and then see uh, how does this copy let's get into properties and see how uh, everything goes on so what i'm trying to do is i'm trying to read a table from the oracle connector and i want i want to write that uh, table to multiple data sets so you might be wondering why why does the copyist i mean why do we want to write to multiple data sets right so yeah in the real time what happens is when when we have like a table a single let's say a single table so and so okay let's say the table uh, emp we have an oracle connector and we need to perform several conversions uh, several conversions i mean there are like uh, different conversions need to be done and it, it doesn't really make sense that one conversion or it's not really a good idea to perform all the conversions using one stage like the transformer because if you use all the conversions using the transformer we can do that but uh, the thing is whenever we are using transformer it it has like it, it uses most of the resources and then the job like uh, the resources are used so obviously it's pretty slow and it leads to the performance issues so yeah instead of that what we need to do is we are just copy we are just asking the data stage to copy and write it to multiple uh, outputs 
and I'll figure out what to do with each of them. Like I can I can use uh, the first output. I can use the first output to just uh, filter out some data, and the second output to just transform, uh, perform some transformations, and third output to do something else. So yeah, that's that's how uh, this copy. I mean, that's uh, the real time scenario where we're gonna use this copy stage. So yep, that's it. And let's put the target stages as data sets because those have uh, simple stages, right? We need not give any specification properties, formatting, and all that, unlike a uh, sequential file stage. So yep. So here we go. And guys, when you practice, please uh, try to use your own uh, names on the links and uh, stages and everything because every project has its own naming standards, if you remember. So yeah, uh, we don't just design this way in real time. So yeah, before getting into that, uh, let's uh, let's create a parameter. Let's use the parameter uh, that, that once we created, okay? I mean because obviously we are using oracle connector so we don't want to uh, type everything so let's go to the properties and click on properties and see we don't have the parameter right but we want to use the existing parameter set which we created so go to add parameter set and click on this parameters so what was our parameter oracle details so just click on oracle details and everything falls into place so yep that's it and now we have oracle details so just click on the parameters server and here is username and password okay and yeah of course I want to have a data stage to write its own SQL statement and let's say I have hr.departments okay okay let's not make let just make EMP okay and before that just test your connection if it is successful connection is successful now uh, we have EMP table right so let's load that EMP table table definitions and plugin and then EMP okay and I want to have all the columns and now go to the properties again and just click on view data and make sure you have the same runtime parameters okay no now we are all set with this so now this EMP table I'm writing it to multiple outsets uh, multiple data sets as outputs using this copy stage so yep just click on output and yeah, I'll tell about this later, but just uh, design this job as of now. So you need not really worry about the partitioning uh, partitioning type because we are just copying the data, right? Anyhow, uh, we get all the, all the uh, we are not performing any aggregations or we are not doing anything in the partitions. So we really don't need to worry about the partitioning technique here. You can just like have default partitioning technique or whatever the partitioning technique is in the previous stage. It doesn't matter so yep and columns everything is there right now come to the output tab so output tab how many output links do we have one two and three right okay so let's see how to define those three output links see i have three output links 28 30 and 32 these are my three different output links so what i'm going to do is i'm gonna just uh let's say i'm gonna just uh put only these four uh, four things in one uh, one data set okay so I'm just dropping all these I mean I can use uh, I can just drop this in any other stage but yeah copy stage we can drop to sometimes what does uh, sometimes some stages they don't allow us to drop these uh, drop these things we need to pass all the columns into this so yeah but the copy stage we can have we can just uh, drop few few columns and we can just go with whatever the column is and for this RCP should be disabled because it doesn't make sense if RCP is enabled even though we don't choose uh, the columns propagate to the next stage right so yeah or RCP should be disabled and this is my first uh, first output I, I want only four columns to be written and okay sorry and second <coughs> sorry 
and second output okay let me change this uh, this thing I want to choose uh, I don't want sal I, I want my uh, column name to display as salary okay sorry <laughs> salary so I want to display my salary name as salary okay and this is my second data second output data and let's move to the third one so what we'll do in the third one is okay this department number let me just put this department number and what's a department number it's integer right so let's make it uh, probably decimal if if you know if you have observed in this or uh, initial stages department number it shows integer 10 20 30 so now let's make it decimal and see uh, how how it gonna work okay so I made three different outputs I mean basically we just pull all those columns because we want to transform everything uh, based on this but I just want to show you guys how we can do multiple functionalities using copy stage so that's the reason I'm choosing only one and one column in each of them so yeah that's not how actually it works so yep that's it and let's give uh, the data sets the output file sets and browse for file ex.ds and obviously overwrite and next is I probably have created something else I guess yeah ex1.ds and yep and let me see if it has okay and yeah remember uh, the, the data sets in the file should have like different file names so ex2.ds okay so we are all set now just uh, let's just compile and see if everything is like goes well or we do we have any errors or something if everything works then I gonna show uh, I gonna talk about the force option in copy stage so job is successfully compiled now run the job and make sure you are using the same parameters yep everything is perfect and then now hit on run so once you hit on run you need to have like all the uh, all the records running up okay so something went wrong let's see w what did we do wrong okay so what does it say copy operator parsing decimal type as be greater than zero okay i got it probably we have something or uh, done something wrong with the decimal type i guess so let's open this copy operator and go to the output and see columns nothing in here we didn't change anything in here next go to the other output link and it's decimal and we have length and scale decimal always need to have scale right so yep that's it and the third output link department number we have decimal okay that's it so we need to give length length for the decimal right so yeah let's give it like uh, probably a uh, five and let's make the scale as two okay this is every decimal need to have like length and precision right so yeah that's that's what it's asking us so yep everything is in place now uh, probably this should work at least now and okay okay yeah this worked perfect now so let's now check each data and how our data looks like okay so yeah basically copy stage we copy everything from the uh, source but yeah I, I just want to show you guys how uh, what are the different functionalities with the copy stage so that's it so see the first stage we choose only I mean first output uh, we wrote only f uh, four columns right so we ask the data data I mean copy stage to write only four columns and just drop all the other columns right so yep this worked for this day this uh, first output data set and let's see uh, the second one what did we do on second one second one we probably have renamed yeah so we renamed sal column name to salary right so yeah let's see if if it's still sal or it made it to salary oh yeah it made uh, it made you salary right so we can rename the columns and why it's showing this is because uh, it's seven we uh, decimal it's seven right so one two three four five six seven so the the 
length is 7 and the precision is 2 so that we didn't change anything it's still salary uh, I mean it's still decimal type we didn't change the conversion or anything in this but yeah I'm just explaining the length and scale thing so yeah this worked perfect renaming and dropping and renaming right so now these are the main two functionalities and you need need not really worry about this third functionality changing the implicit data type conversions but I just want to show you guys that's it and now uh, let's see we changed what did we do we are here we changed department number which was integer type we changed it to decimal and we gave length and scale right so yeah let's see if that works now see it worked so what did we give a uh, length as five right so one two three four five so we have five digits so the length of the data type is five and the precision is two right precision is something which we need to have like after the decimal so precision is two so yep this is also this also worked perfect but let me see uh, the director so yeah so when you see here what does it say here when input uh, department number implicit conversion from source type into result type decimal right so what is it saying here it's saying you did you did convert a uh, integer value to decimal and that's implicit conversion and probably this is like a uh, you need to handle somehow because it, it the job runs and everything falls per, uh, falls in perfect place but the thing is in real time uh, there should be probably no warnings in real time everything should be like good perfect so yeah when you see such warnings what you need to do is you need to uh, make that uh, implicit conversions just copy the data just copy the data to this third data set and then use modify or transformer stage and then make the implicit conversions there so yeah that's how it works so yeah this is not the important functionality even though it's it worked perfect yeah uh, data state data stage director uh, it shows uh, some errors so yep and uh, renaming and dropping it didn't show up any error so everything is perfect so that's what it's a copy stage and now let's see what is this force uh, force option in the copy stage so the force option it's basically just true or false option so what does it mean is this force option ensures that uh, uh, basically let's say if we have like one uh, if uh, okay so let's say you are not writing it to multiple stages you are just using copy stage and just writing it to one uh, one data set output okay I mean it's not data set any other output but you are not making multiple copies you are just copying to one output okay so what happens is when you are just copying into one output data stage or orchestrate which is the background code of the data stage it, it it thinks that you are not performing the copy operation because copy means you're writing into multiple outputs right yeah because since you are use uh, since you are using since you are writing it trying to write to only once uh, output data stage thinks that the copy operation is superfluous and you are trying to uh, and you're just trying to uh, I mean it just it just uh, aborts it just aborts I mean not not really a botting job but okay let me let me just uh, rephrase it uh, again I'm I'm I think I didn't make it clear okay so this force option if you make true so it specifies that even though we are writing it to one data set we are specifying data stage that even though I'm writing it to one data set you please consider uh, please don't try to optimize job and please consider this copy as a copy operator even though I'm writing it to one please consider this operation as a copy operator I mean obviously when we are writing it to multiple data sets data stage understands the orchestrate core and it it it, uh, it performs its copy operation but when you're writing it to one data set it means that it 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 just uh, it just understands that you're not writing to multiple data sets so you you're not really using a uh, copy stage perfectly so it's gonna remove the copy operator and uh, just uh, I mean try to optimize your job so that's the reason uh, this force option uh, force option exists so yeah when you're writing it to when you're writing it to one data set if you set this to true it me uh, okay if you set this to true it means that yeah you're telling data stage even though I'm writing it to one data set 
please make sure that this copy operation is performed correctly and perfectly and you do not try to you means data stage you do not try to uh, uh, you don't you don't you do not try to optimize my job by treating it whatever you like I'm just using copy operator because I'm in like need of that so you don't try to uh, overrun or you don't try to optimize my job so that's pretty much it and by default it's always false so you're asking data stage so I'm I mean if it's false you're writing it to multiple outputs so you need not worry about the orchestrate code behind the uh, copy stage because when you are writing uh, to that uh, multiple outputs it understands that the copy operator uh, should work perfectly so yeah you need not force the option then so yep that's pretty much about the copy stage and yeah that's it guys uh, so yeah and one other thing while I was teaching uh, while I was telling about the sequential file stage I said that how uh, the output file looks like right okay so probably we should have written to Argyl okay yeah so yeah see okay let me just okay see the sequential file thing this is my this is my first uh, input data input data and without changing anything I wrote it to my output output uh, data I didn't change any formatting uh, options except that I used uh, these things what are these this is a file name column and this uh, these okay the, this is the path is a file name column and this is a row number right so yeah I just use these and see double quotes I said uh, by default it gonna have double quotes right yeah so every every record every column every word every character has the double quotes so yep that's how uh, the end uh, sequential file stage output looks like if you don't change anything like by default options it gonna uh, look like this I mean uh, I, I have a pipe delimiter if uh, I made it pipe delimiter so it have pipe delimiter so but if you have like your input data as a pipe delimiter and you don't want the output data to be pipe and you want it to be comma yeah you can just leave uh, default as comma but yeah except the delimiter I did not change anything in the uh, output file so yeah uh, I forgot to show you in the sequential file stage I remember I said that I'll show you by the end of the video but somehow I forgot so I just realized that I didn't show so I want to show you guys and yep that's pretty much it guys uh, about the copy stage and in my next uh, video I would probably deal with the filter stage and the filter and funnel these are the pretty much simpler stages and then go for the most important and real time uh, jobs join merge and look up so that's it guys thank you for watching thanks thanks for uh, your interest and everything thanks guys bye bye